Welcome back to the TV show, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I am reviewing book number four in Lloyd Alexander's Pridane Chronicles, and that is Taran Wanderer. Now let's talk about the cover first. We always do that. I love graphic design and I love cover illustration. And this has got a great painting on it by the artist Jean Leon Hewins, who did all of these covers that I've got. This is book one. I reviewed book one, the book of three, on my channel a couple of years ago. It's also got a great cover illustration by the same artist. I've reviewed book two, Black Cauldron on the channel another great uh, that is just a magnificent painting i don't know if it gets better than that i reviewed the castle of lear another great painting and then the very final book book five which i have not reviewed yet is um the high king all done by the same artist all done spectacularly and this is a great painting look at that it's just got this i don't know if you can see it but it's got this old man holding a glowing crescent moon shaped magical glowing a uh, light of some sort and we've got our main character taran here with the sword up against him uh it's just an absolutely delightful magical painting as are all of them so these books are special to my heart because i bought them when i was just a young kid probably one of the first five book series i mean i read the sword of shannara god this might well, then the lord of the rings this might be the third series that i read as a kid i think it went the the sword of shannara was the first fantasy novel i read as a kid then i led read the lord of the rings and then i i'm pretty positive that it was the pride and Con chronicles that i read third so in a lifetime of reading tens of thousands of books all of which are in this library and my library downstairs. This was one of the earlier exposures I had to literature. And I still have a fondness in my heart for these. These are still just magical to me. Just looking at the covers gives me chills. That's why I talk about cover illustration a lot on this channel. is because I think the packaging of the physical book is just as important almost as the book itself. Especially if it's done right and consistently like these were. And I still have them, and it's still. And I, I sit and I look at these, and I still think of myself as a young twelve-year-old boy reading these. It just takes me back. Anyway, enough of the nostalgia trip. Let's get to the story. So we followed our main guy Taran through. You know, he's the pig keeper, the pig assistant, pig keeper, or whatever they call him. Uh, and he he's been through adventures in these first three books. He's got a lot of companions he travels with: the dwarf and Gurgi and Fluter Flam and the prince and Elin Y and and all of those. Now he is journeying off himself on a quest to find himself. Now this is Taran's search for his parentage because he's an orphan. You know, that's another thing. I have an affinity. For books or movies about orphan farm boys with a destiny. That's why Luke Skywalker is my favorite guy. That's why Shay Olmsford in The Sword of Shannara was one of my heroes as a kid. You know, I love Jon Snow, Randall Thor, um, Simon from uh, the Dragonbone Chair trilogy. I mean, I, I, orphan farm boys with a destiny, that's my jam. I, myself, was adopted. I did not know my parent, my biological parentage for the longest time. I grew up on a farm. I was an orphan farm boy myself. You can see why I related to this. Anyway, he goes off in search of his parentage, which I've done myself. And it's interesting what you find. Um, and he goes off on search of it. Now, that, what begins as a gallant, sort of lighthearted quest for Turan grows more and more heroic and intense and sort of grim as we go. Uh, he starts out going off with uh, his friend Gurgi, and then he picks up companions along the way. He meets different people, different creatures that send him further and further into this quest. The one thing that he does not have with him is his 
secret crush and love interest, Elin Y. Which, and I missed her in this story as much as Turan probably missed having her in this story. Elin Y was one of, well, I'm not going to say, I just, Elin Y was my very first literary crush. Now, some of you that grew up later than me, and you know, maybe, you know, this, I grew up in the 80s. Some of you that grew up in the 2000s, maybe your literary crush was Hermione. Mine was Elin Y. The plucky redhead that is represented just gorgeously in this cover. Don't know if I can get that in focus. But anyway, you get the point. She's a babe, and uh, she's got a personality, and uh, I wanted her to be my girlfriend when I was a 12-year-old kid. I'm just saying. And the fact that this book has not a trace of her in it is a disappointment to me. Just as I'm sure that as Turan went on his quest without her, he missed her. I missed her. Everybody misses her. She's part of the huge part of this tale. However, she's not here. Just have to... A man has got to know himself. The only way he can know himself is to ditch the relationships he's got and go out and find himself. And that's the theme of this. That's what Turan needs. He can't always have... Elon Y there to bounce his ideas off of, to comfort him. He can't always comfort her. They can't be a pair. They've got to, at some point, every human has to just be like, I got to figure this shit out on my own. Um, otherwise, I'll never be able to make anybody, you know, I mean, I'll just, because if you've read these stories, they, Elon Y and Turan, they poke sticks at each other just out of sheer immaturity. You know, they get into arguments over the stupidest stuff just out of sheer... Yeah, they, both of them got to get over that. And this is Turan's moment to go out on himself, by himself, and explore the world, figure things out on his own, become a hero of his own, build that self-confidence that he needs. Those are the themes of this book. And it comes at the right time, you know? I'll just read the back of it, and then we'll give it a rating. Turan, the assistant pig keeper who wants to be a hero, goes questing for the knowledge of his parentage, hoping that his journey will en enable will ennoble him in the eyes of Elinway, the princess with the red gold hair. He also kind of wants to be a hero just to look a little better in the girl's eye. It's a legit reason for a quest, I must say. Accompanied by several loyal friends, Turan begins his search when the three wily entrancheresses of the marshes of Morva send him to consult the Mirror of Lunette for the answers he is seeking, crypti cryptically promising that the finding takes no more than the looking. Now that's pretty, I mean, yeah, you're not going to find it if you ain't looking. You know, sometimes I wonder where my glasses are, and I'm like, what the fuck are they? And I just sit there and be like, what the fuck are they? Well, I don't find them until I get off my ass and look. <coughs> Excuse me. During his adventures, he meets Craddock the Shepherd and the common people of Prydain, whom he comes to respect and admire. With their help, he continues his mission to learn the secret of the mirror and the truth about himself. Now, he wants to be a great hero, and sometimes he finds hero heroism in just the common folks of Prydain that he comes across. It really humbles him as a man. And when he is done with his journey, well, we don't, I'm not going to spoil it. Does he find out who his parents are? Does it even fucking matter who his parents are? Yeah, that's, these are questions that are answered. Anyway, uh, again, the Chronicles of Prydain, each one of these books gives a solid 10 out of 10 from me. I love them. They're nostalgic. I, I love picking them up and rereading them every now and then just to take myself back to when I was a child and these books were filled with so much magic for me. I can still feel it. The writing is great. Lloyd Alexander just writes super well. The Welch history and the Welch sort of flavor that's just injected into every word of this book shines through. Absolutely wonderful. Turan Wanderer as do all of these books, get 10 out of 10. Tune in in a few months, because we will read and review the last book in the series, and uh, there you have it.